I need a new job if this one gets detected. Maybe. The day will come someday. Yeah, yeah maybe. <laughs> so doubtful fracture. Oh yeah, there. I mean that one. That's actually a fracture that I might have missed. I'm not sure. I don't actually remember what I was, what I wanted to show here. But this can now be good or bad for me. <laughs> it was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. Hi guys and welcome to another video of Radiologist versus Artificial Intelligence. This is episode 2 and with me today is again Chris, who is a machine learning expert and responsible for all the technology stuff of our company, Aristra. Hi Chris, how's it going? Hi Chris, thanks for having me on your channel again. So what we are going to do today, Chris, is we go through the recent study that was published about uh, artificial intelligence algorithms. Uh, one algorithm in particular that's uh, detecting fractures, and that's the algorithm by Gleamer. It's a French company, a startup company, that is developing this bone view algorithm to detect and assist radiologists or also emergency doctors in uh, X-ray analysis, uh, specifically fracture detection. So they also sponsored this video, but had no control over content. And also uh, we didn't have to get this video approved or anything. So thanks for that. Okay, so here we are in the cloud packs by Osimis. And this is their demo platform. And it's quite nice because it has the Glimmer algorithm already included here for test purposes. You can see this one here. So if you were working with this uh, pack system and Gleamer is activated or connected, then what would happen if you open a case here, a female with elbow plane films, you just open the case and the result would already be here. We can see the fracture here of the radial head and on the lateral. The fracture is not really easy to see here, but we certainly have this fracture here. And what the Gleamer algorithm or the fracture detection algorithm does here, bone view, it provides you with this information here, fract, which means fracture. And then it's very nice because it also uh, provides you with a box where the algorithm actually detected the fracture. So it's not just saying it's a fracture, it's also showing where the fracture is suspected to be. Okay, so what you can see here on the right side is a paper that was recently published in the Radiology uh, Journal. And I can already uh, say that this is a really interesting publication because they offered a lot of the details of how the algorithm actually works. So they took a training data from 60,000 radiographs that were acquired at uh, 17 French medical centers with uh, trauma patients and had um, radiographs from shoulder, arm, hand, pelvis, leg, and uh, foot. So this is the training data set. This data set was split into training, validation, and test data set. And then in this particular study, they also had this study data set, which had additional data, um, which they showed to uh, six readers, six radiologists plus six emergency doctors, so 12 readers even in, in total. And the study cohort uh, for validation, so this is independent from the training set with the 60,000 cases, but in this particular study cohort, this was also acquired from 17 medical centers and it spanned images from six uh, scanner manufacturers. This is very interesting because usually um, when working on machine learning models, there's a domain shift between different scanners and they even included scanners which they're not trained on in the training into the validation study here. And what they did next was they took uh, 300 cases and showed them to the 12 doctors and 300 cases. So overall 600 for each doctor and 300 out of them was without the aid of the Gleamer algorithm and the other 300 was with the help of the uh, algorithm. And then they um, analyzed the overall sensitivity, speci specificity um, with and without the tool. The machine learning model itself is really interesting because it was uh, they used a Detectron 2 uh, network, which is uh, a work that was published by Facebook in 2019, which is open source software. So anybody can just look at the code, download the code, play around with it. And in the supplemental of the paper, Gleamer even provides a lot of detailed information on what they did exactly to train this public, um, publicly available network 
with their training data. So this is really transparent and I really appreciate it that they made all this information publicly available and, and used the open source model here. So let's jump into the results. What you can see here are uh, two rock curves or specifically uh, the, on the left side is the classical rock curve which shows the uh, sensitivity and uh, the specificity on the uh, y and x axis. And each dot here represents one reader. And in these two lines here, they have the performance of the algorithm itself without any human reader on the straight line and the more recent improved version on the dotted line. And what you can see here with the dots and the arrows is uh, the dot indicates the diagnostic performance of a physician without the help of Gleamer. And then the arrow indicates how the diagnostic performance changes when the respective reader has the output of the algorithm in addition to his own opinion. So ideally, you would want every reader to move to the upper left corner. So ideally, we would have a sensitivity of one and a specificity of one. Um, and as, as you can see, all readers or almost all readers move more to the upper left corner. So for example, this reader here, this is a senior emergency physician, and he can improve his diagnostic performance from here to here by using Gleamer in addition to his own opinion. So quite a lot, right? So it's not yeah, just that. Yeah, for, for some, I would say, especially for those who have a rather poor diagnostic performance, the improvement is really, really large. We have to say though that the physicians did not have access to all the prior clinical information. Mm -hmm. So this is, I know this plays a very important role for making an informed decision, but to allow uh, a more fair comparison with Gleamer, the physicians were not, uh, they didn't have this information available. So and then the last part I wanted to talk about is uh, this dotted line here. This is an improved version of the algorithm. So the doctors here used this one, but they also released a second version. And in this version, it was even better than almost all physicians. It, I think it was better than 11 of the 12 physicians uh, who used both their other experience plus the output of FEMA. And the improved version was uh, better than almost all of them. Yeah, so our, overall, I would say this is a really, really impressive uh, paper, very impressive evaluation. They also um, so what we are going to do now is uh, basically we want to challenge the algorithm and uh, see how how actually it is dealing with difficult cases or maybe not so obvious cases. This is the demo portal of Gleamer and we can now upload here a few cases that are collected over the last couple of days. So let's start off with this case here. So we can see we have a non-ossifying fibroma of the distal tibia in a young patient. Oh, I'm actually, I'm actually not sure whether it's dealing with pediatric cases yet. Anyways, we're going to try. If I, if I remember correctly, they included patients from 18 years in the training set. Yeah, okay. So this is maybe not so fair, but uh, yeah, we'll give it a go anyways. And we can see there is a fracture here, pathologic fracture at the level where we have this non-ossifying fibroma here some periostal reaction up there um, yeah let's see how the algorithm handles this one okay so we just dropped the cases here obviously you would have the result right in your pack system once you open the case to read so this is now a little bit artificial and we will just show you this once here press analyze and you will see it's very quick and it will just show us the result so we don't really have this one okay so it detects the fracture and let's download the case okay so this is now the result that we downloaded and you can see it shows a fracture and it gives you this rectangle that i already showed you in the old um, video and you can see the algorithm actually detected this fracture which is quite good it was not detected on the lateral view here which is also yeah pr probably pretty hard to see so well done here so this is the next case that we will show the algorithm. We can see the clavicular fracture here at the yeah, middle third, but there's also like a rib fracture here and there of the, what is it, the third rib. So we will see how the algorithm is dealing with this kind of rib fractures here, here, there, and maybe even up there. See how that one goes. 
I think this is a really interesting case because as a human, you might oversee many things because there is so much going on. And I would expect this detectron uh, object detection approach that Gleamer is using to actually don't care about if there is two or 10 or 20 findings. So it also shows that there is a fracture and let's have a look where Okay, this is now really nice. Okay, guys, this is uh, a little bit impressive <laughs> to be fair here. So it detected the clavicular fracture, it detected the rib fractures here, there and there. It didn't detect the pneumothorax, but this is obviously not trained for that. Um, but I'm, I'm impressed. I must say I was not expecting the algorithm to detect all these kind of fractures. So what do you think? Why do you think the, this detector, why should it not care about the number of findings? Why is that? Because in the way the CNN is trained with the feature pyramids, I think the exact technical details are beyond the scope of this video. I will go into more detail in a blog post that I'm writing in the next few days. But basically, a CNN doesn't care whether there's one or two or 10 feature maps that are relevant and have a high activation for the thing that is trained to detect. So. It doesn't matter if there's one or 20 fractures in an image okay. for the network. I think it's also important because satisfaction of search, you could easily just see this fracture here, report it and go on to the next case and miss rib fractures and pneumothorax if you're not careful. So here we have a patient. I don't remember the, the story, probably fall and pain. And we can see there is a step off here, cortical step off of the femoral neck. So this is a medial femoral neck fracture. So no surprise here, it detected the fracture, which is pretty good. It was not detected on the axial, but it was detected here again on the AP view of the pelvis, also the same region of interest that we were already suspecting. So this is the next case. This is a knee radiograph and we can see here a fracture and it's very tricky to see, so we can see this line and stuff, but it was actually a real fracture and the patient later underwent surgery. So this one was now missed, but I think it's probably really hard and also can get easily missed by a radiologist. I don't actually remember what I was, what I wanted to show here. So this can now be good or bad for me. <laughs> yeah, there's a fracture, you can see it here. And then it also detected the same fracture that I saw it's not highlighting anything here. It might be a non-displaced fracture, uh, but it's it's quite tricky to say. So this patient here, this is now interesting as well because technically it's not a trauma if I remember correctly, but it's a stress fracture. So it's something that happens not after a fall or so, but maybe from, you know, from a long walk or something like that meaning that there was too much stress on the bone and basically the trabecular fractured here and it's not going completely through. We can see there is like this band like sclerosis here and some periosteal reaction here indicating that this is happening for some time already and not just um, an acute thing. And in the study, I think they all had acute fractures. There were no like chronic fractures or fractures in healing processes, if I remember correctly. So we'll see how this one goes. And just to uh, show you that I'm actually not making this up. Here is the corresponding MR. And you can see this fracture here and all this surrounding bone marrow edema. So let's see what the algorithm is saying. So doubtful fracture. Oh yeah, there. I mean that one, that's actually a fracture that I might have missed. I'm not sure. Okay, let's go back to the orig original case. I didn't pay attention there. You can see all this uh, bone marrow edema here as well. And it's actually also um, the age, I'm not, I don't remember the story of the case, but it's probably an older, either an older or older fracture or a stress injury here as well. So I think it's very impressive that they detected this. So if you don't have any clinical information as a radiologist, um, maybe, you know, what happened, <laughs> what happened with me now was satisfaction of search. I was just seeing this one here. I didn't remember that this case had two findings on this particular image the only thing you see it's a little bit you know the density of the bone is a little bit higher than the other bones if you will and on this view here there's nothing remarkable really and here 
the trabecular structure is a little bit hazy and it's just this irregularity here. So I think this is very good that the algorithm picked this one out. I need a new job if this one gets detected. Maybe. The day will come someday. Yeah, yeah maybe. <laughs> I don't remember the story, but also this was the real, uh, like they did it in the study. The algorithm doesn't have the uh, history anyways. So we can see some step off here at the, what is it, the uh, medial aspect of the calcaneus. And here on the lateral view, there is this line here, which seems pretty odd, normally you don't have this line here. And um, so it might actually realize that there is something fishy going on and call this a fracture. And um, let's show you quickly the MRI of this patient. And you can see there is a fracture here with all this bone meridema around it. But interestingly, if you now look at the radiograph, it's not this fracture. So this is not the fracture, but the fracture would be at this level here. I mean, yeah. So again, this one's correctly recognized by the algorithm that it's not a fracture. I mean, that's something we can say, right? So this is already like good. So this is the next case. And you can see we have a normal articulation between the lunate and the radius. And there is a you know, the capitate is dislocated dorsally. So we have a perilunate dislocation here. That's why also the lunate has this funny morphology here and the cellular lines are completely messed up here. But there is another finding and, but this one, it looks abnormal at this area here. And this one looks like a fragment that's evolved a little bit somewhere. Uh, let's have a look at the CT. There is a fracture of the trapezium. So that's why they, did the CT and now that's quite quite clear that there is this fracture. And my guess would be that it will detect it. Oh, okay. That's to them. To them. <laughs> that's surprising. <laughs> that's surprising. I was um, expecting it to see it. But it's it's not easy. So so that's that's all the cases uh, that we had to go at and uh, yeah. So Chris, uh, what do you think? What's your conclusion so, as a user? So um, I was collecting these cases that I thought were difficult for the algorithm and it actually did better than I expected. And uh, I can certainly see value in such a product, not just because it might reassure you that there is something, um, you don't fall for satisfaction of search errors because it can actually detect multiple fractures. I think that's kind of like a important finding for me here. And also the other implications that an algorithm like this can have, like prioritization of reading lists according to, you know, the, uh, what's it called? Like if you have fractures, the algorithm could technically, or software could actually put fracture cases on top of the list. So they don't get read after two hours or three hours if there is a lot of stuff happening in an emergency room. And yeah, it did really better than I expected. So I was really trying to trick it. There were some cases that are obviously difficult, but they're also very difficult for radiologists. And depending on your daily performance, you can easily miss them as a radiologist uh, yourself. So yeah, that's, that's my takeaway from this. What's your idea or what's your conclusion? Well, from the technical side, I can say the, the science, the paper is really sound. I'm really impressed by the study design, 17 imaging centers, uh, 12 readers. That's really impressive. And it's also really rare in radiology AI to make a really huge multi-center, multi-reader study that evaluates the CE mark products in clinical practice or in, in, in a setting that is very close to clinical practice. Mm -hmm. That's really great work and I would be very happy to see more papers like this in the future by all different kinds of AI vendors. Yeah, definitely. All right. I think that's all for today. Thanks for watching and go check out Chris's blog. Uh, you find the link in the description down below and see you next week. Bye, guys. Bye bye.